Hello, everyone. My name is Jenny Wang. I'm from Intel MMP team. So I'm a software engineering, which uh, focused on the big data analytics using the machine learning or deep learning. Um, today, I will work with my colleague, Louis, to give an introduction of the, our hybrid solution with uh, analytics zoo and uh, Alexio to provide the acceleration of uh, uh, deep learning on the big data systems. Before I give an introduction of our solution, first, let me introduce the uh, Intel Analytics Zoo project. As you know, in the recent years, as the uh, data become bigger and bigger, so large uh, neural network uh, performs uh, excellent uh, performance in the machine learning and deep learning world. So in many industries, uh, people are, uh, like to do the complex big data analytics using the machine learning and deep learning. But uh, as you know, in this diagram, uh, you can see the machine learning or deep learning code is just a black block in the whole system. It needs to integrate with other components in the big data analytics pipelines. So how to integrate the deep learning or machine learning uh, system to the big data system to make an end-to-end -end pipeline is a challenge for the big data users. For this purpose, Intel open source analytics zoo project, which is a unified uh, AI platform for big data systems. It helps the uh, big data users to make the, uh, they use to the, sorry, it helps the user to create the end-to-end -end deep learning pipelines much easier. So user can create a prototype on laptop using the simple sample data, and then uh, do the experiment on their development cluster using the history data. After they train the models, they can deploy their models to production cluster environment. So the whole process from the laptop to the production deployment, there's nearly no code change from your applications. And Alexu also provides the directly access to the production big data systems like the Hadoop, Hive, or HBase. And the big and the Alexu provides the seamless deployment on the production distributed clusters. Let's look at the uh, architecture of Analytics Zoo. Analytics Zoo is a unified data analytics and AI platform. In the bottom of the Analytics Zoo, it supports uh, a various uh, compute environment, like the laptop, Kubernetes cluster, Hadoop cluster cloud, and it supports the major deep learning frameworks like the TensorFlow, PyTorch, OpenVINO. And it supports the uh, po uh, popular distributed analytics system like the Spark Link Ray. And it supports the uh, popular Python libraries like NumPy, Pandas. And uh, on top of the compute environment, uh, analytics will provide uh, support for the end-to-end -end pipelines it supports API to do the distributed TensorFlow or PyTorch training on Spark. And it provides a real Spark uh, framework, which can do the uh, re applications on top of a Spark cluster. And uh, to make a whole uh, pipeline on the Spark, it uh, creates a, comp yeah, sorry, um, to, to make uh, the deep learning pipelines work with the uh, Spark data frame and the machine learning pipelines. Uh, sorry. <laughs> so it supports the deep learning pipelines compatible with Spark data frames and the machine learning pipelines. And it provides the inference model to do the real time inference on the cluster environment. And on top of the uh, end to end pipelines, analytics will provide the machine learning workflows. The AutoML workflow provides a 
uh, model selection hyperparameter uh, tunings and automatically cluster serving do the cluster serving automatically. And to help the user to create their applications much easier, uh, Analyx will provide a series of building models at agris in the different areas, like the recommendation area, time series area, computer visions, and the NLP area. Let's look at some key features of Analyx Zoo. Uh, Analyx Zoo provides distributed TensorFlow, PyTorch training, and the inference on Spark. So user can use the native TensorFlow or PyTorch model or the Keras model and do the training, distributed training on the Spark cluster. And the Analyx Zoo provides the Rayon Spark framework, which uh, supports the user to run the Ray program directly on the Yarn Spark Kubernetes clusters. So Rayon Spark will trigger the start of the Ray cluster on top of uh, Spark executors. So user can write the Ray program and then run the Ray program directly on Spark cluster. That helps the user to do the end-to-end -end pipeline from the Spark ETL to the Ray AI applications without any data transfer. And the uh, uh, Analytics provides an end and estimator pipeline, which is uh, compatible with Spark data frame and the Spark data frame pipeline. So user can use all these pipeline to create their complex data analytics system on the big data system. And the Analytics to provide a scalable auto ML framework for the time series prediction. So using the auto ML, you can do the automatically feature selection, model selection, and the hyperparameter tunings using Ray on Spark for your time series model. So Analyx Zoo supports the distributed inference, which is makes easier for the cluster serving. In this diagram, you can see the user just deploy a local node or the Docker container, which is connected to the backend cluster service. And then user just write a simple Python code to uh, submit the data to the input queue and get the inference model from the output queue. From this way, uh, Annex will do the management of the cluster serving and the user just need to do a very simple things. And uh, this framework supports uh, uh, distribute real-time inference automatically for the TensorFlow, PyTorch, Cafe, Big Deal, OpenVINO models uh, with the Spark Streaming Flink uh, frameworks. We have worked with many companies to do the real world uh, applications. And uh, we have uh, got more than 60 design wings to do the application using Analyx Zoo. And uh, we got uh, more than 10 user wings for the GPU in the, in, with our partners, like the JD.com or Me Media. And uh, our customer used uh, uh, Analyx to create their end-to-end -end system and give a uh, very excellent feedback. Next part is I will, introdu I will give an introduction of Sorry. Next part is I will give an introduction of the hybrid call solution with Alexio. First, let's look at the big data journey and the innovations. In the very early age, the compute and the data storage are always on the same clusters. So the MapReduce, Hive, and the HDFS are in the same cluster. But this is not, uh, flexi not flexible for the compute and the storage. So later, the compute and the storage are disaggregated. So the compute and the HDFS are on the different cluster. With cloud become popular in the recent years, uh, many companies or users uh, put their HDFS data 
in the clouds, either on um, public or on um, private clouds, but their compute is in a different cloud. So this creates a hybrid cloud uh, uh, environment. And this hybrid cloud environment provides uh, uh, analytics across the different data centers, which provides uh, more flexibility and uh, do the accelerations for the big data analytics. But this also brings a challenge because the data gets increasingly remote for the compute and the many uh, workload like the uh, deep learning workload or the Spark ETL, they need to access the data more frequently. So, but the data is in either in the on-prem HDF Hadoop system or the, in the cloud, which is also in remote. So there's a, a overhead to access the data for the compute. So there's a one solution is that copy the data from the remote to the local compute systems. But it's a manual uh, process and it's uh, uh, error prone. So to create a solution which make the, the data immediately available for the compute system is a good way to handle this challenge. Uh, with this uh, data availab availability, uh, the compute nodes can solve the problem quickly and also decrease the costs. And in our case, as you know, the NX2 will do the deep learning applications on the big data system. And the deep learning application is always an uh, iteration process. So it needs to access the data for multiple times. Uh, if the data is in the remote environment, so there will be a, a big overload for loading the data, overhead for loading the bit, uh, data. So there will be a big overhead to load the data. So from this uh, reasons, we create a solution which combine the analytic zoo and electro. Uh, we deploy analytic zoo and uh, electro on the same cluster. And uh, using the electro to ac access uh, remote data storage. Uh, in our solution, we deploy in two scenario. The first scenario is that uh, analytic zoo and electro uh, cluster is in the public cloud and the storage is in also in the public cloud, but in the different data center. So analytic to uh, access data through the electro, which provides the acceleration of the data load. And the, the second scenario is that um, the uh, analytic zoo and electro are deployed in the cloud environment, but the data storage, the Hadoop system is on on-premium cluster. So using the Alexio, uh, Alexio can get, a, get data from Alexio, which improves the uh, loading performance for, from the data. Let's look at the IO stack for this solution. So in this solution, uh, we set up the uh, electro storage to two levels. The first level is a memory, memory level and the second is a, a SSD or HDD level. So there are three levels of uh, data access. So when the uh, Analytic so application is running. The Spark cluster will access the data to uh, from the uh, electro memory storage. This is a uh, uh, most frequent uh, access. And uh, for the second access level, which is uh, to access uh, to the electro SSD, there is a uh, limited time to access uh, electro SSD. 
to access a uh, uh, Hadoop remote system, uh, 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 Alexa applications only need to access remotes when necessary. And then you can see the speed for this three level accessing. The memory access, uh, electro memory accessing is uh, most fast, is fastest. Uh, the member, uh, uh, the electro memory access is fastest. It's uh, around uh, 10,000 to 100,000 megabits per second. And for the electro SAT HDD uh, access of data, the speed is about uh, 1,000 or 10,000 megabit per second. And to access the remote Hadoop system is the slowest. It's about 10 or 1,000 megabits per second. With this uh, analog zoo and electro solution, so the data loading time uh, become uh, much shorter than the previous solution, which will access the uh, remote uh, HDFS uh, system every time. Now, for the next part, let me uh, introduce Louis Tsai. He, he will give us a performance report for this solution. So this is Louis from, I'm from, I'm from Intel. I'm a technical consulting engineer. We supporting customer issue for deep learning framework like Analytics Zoo. So in this session, uh, we will uh, show you a performance PR uh, by using Analytics Zoo and Elixir on uh, inception deep learning uh, cases. So let me share the uh, slide deck. So for the performance measurement, uh, we using AWS uh, as the environment and uh, EC2 instant type, we use R5 large instant type and they are 32 uh, vCPU per instant. Uh, we have 256 gigabyte memory and the network speed is around 10 gigabyte. And we also need uh, 100 gigabyte disk space because we uh, need to uh, put some uh, training data and uh, intermediate data there. And so overall, we uh, we we using six uh, R5 instant type, and we do the experiment uh, using inception model on ImageNet. So in the bottom, you can see we put the GitHub link there. Uh, so if you want to give the experiment experiment a try, you can use this GitHub link and look into the detail. So overall, we use the inception model and we connect to the Spark Master to show you um, the detail of our experiment. So we, uh, you can see there's a running application and the application is Analytics Zoo in session V1 train example. Uh, totally because we're using uh, six instant. So totally we have 192 uh, CPU core and uh, for each instant we have 160 gigabyte uh, memory. And uh, so you can also see there are six worker uh, from the Spark Master web page. And if you take a look into the timeline, actually you can see there are uh, six executor. So per executor, uh, uh, one executor per, per worker. So uh, basically here's our layout for the experiment. So uh, let's more uh, look into the timeline more, more uh, in detail. So overall in the uh, top diagram, uh, you can see there's a timeline diagram. Uh, and uh, first we need to load the training data and testing data. So we mark, mark it as job zero and job one. So for sure after job one, you can see lots of uh, training happen among different worker. Uh, in the time slide. So you can see uh, there's only one, uh, actually one worker in the timeline for job zero and job one. After job one, you will see many workers stop uh, 
working on the training execution. So for the job zero and job one, uh, we uh, further uh, split the uh, job into two couples, uh, two stage. So for job uh, zero, for sure there are two stage. Uh, and uh, for job one, there are also two stage. And uh, actually for, uh, for each job, uh, the first stage is uh, loading the data. So actually uh, we will do two experiments and the difference will be the uh, first stage uh, for two experiments. So basically we were using different data source. One we were using A3, uh, the other we were using Elixir, but both doing the deep learning by using Analytics Zoo on Apache Spark cluster. So as we mentioned, we further look into the uh, first stage uh, for our two experiments. So as we, as we mentioned, uh, the, the first stage like stage zero, uh, we loading the data in the sequence file state. So we, uh, we actually, we um, point out uh, what, we, uh, what we saw from the sequence file state. So as you can see, uh, there are two experiments. Uh, one is in the left-hand side. The, the other is in the right-hand side. And you can see in the left-hand side, we use the A3 data directly. And in the uh, right-hand side, we using Elixir data by uh, accessing the Elixir master node. So that's the two experiment we count that. So let's look into the performance result. So basically uh, we're using Inception Net and uh, doing the deep learning training with Elixir. And we do two experiments, one is with uh, Elixir, the other is without Elixir. So basically uh, in the left hand side, we want to show a diagram for average load time. So uh, we mentioned that we do the experiment to measure the data loading time to showcase the benefit from Elixir. Uh, so in the left hand side is the average load time. So for sure, uh, lower is better. And the blue bar is with Elixir. The yellow bar is using S3 directly. As you can see, uh, we have a good speed up by using Elixir uh, on Analytics Zoo. So we achieve around 1.5 times speed up by using Elixir. Uh, with analytics zoo. And uh, moreover, you can also see smaller standard deviation when we use Elixir. Uh, so uh, indeed, we see a good benefit uh, by uh, to running a deep learning training workload on Apache Spark with Elixir and analytics zoo. Uh, so that's my uh, material today. I think I will let Jenny wrap up all the uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Louis. Today we share the experience of our solution with Analyx to add a lecture in the hybrid cloud to accelerate the deep learning uh, trainings in, uh, in the big data systems. So there are some takeaways from this uh, solution. First, uh, the deep learning machine learning analytics in the hybrid cloud become uh, very popular and it's uh, become the trend in many companies. And the uh, second, analytics zoo provides a unified data analytics and AI platform for big data systems. And the big data, a big remote data set, uh, sorry, and the big remote data access bring the challenge for the analog to applications in the hybrid cloud because it's need to access the data frequently. Uh, analog to plus actual solution in the hybrid cloud provides a, a much accelerations of data loading in the analytic zoo applications and deep learning analytics on the big data systems. Uh, thank you, everybody.